Welcome to INFS 325 Public Relations. In this session, we'll look at employee relations. In many PR programs or campaigns, there is the tendency to forget the internal publics. Remember when we categorized publics, we said internal and external. Now, this particular topic looks at the importance of looking at our internal publics because they can make or unmake your organization. So in this session, we'll look at how to deal with employees because they are publics to your organization. So we'll understand the importance of communicating with your publics and how to, communi how to communicate effectively with them and to deal with them so that they will be able to also bring out a favorable impression about your organization. So why do we consider employees? Why do you think employee relations are even important in any PR program? As I mentioned, they are internal publics. So communicating with employees increasingly is increasingly important for all organizations because employees are the most important assets in the organization. Remember, they are internal publics. Now, there, there are so many things going on in the organization, such as pressures and workers facing uncertain futures. And so employees really are vulnerable. Employees are vulnerable. They are suspicious of what is going on. And so you, as a public relations officer in that organization, will have to relay the fears of empl employees. You need to calm them down. You need to tell them exactly what is happening so that they can give of their best in that particular organization. So when dealing with employees in an organization, you need a number of good communication skills. The employer or the employee wants to make sure that you in the organization are mindful of his interests, you are mindful of his wants, you are mindful of issues surrounding them, you are mindful of concerns that they have. So smart organizations will always tailor messages and media to reach each specific subgroup within the organization. Because even within the employees, there are different categories of employees or subgroups. So you would have senior managers, you have first line managers, you would have staff, you have line managers. In the information environment, you have the library class, you have the senior members, you have the senior staff. Now, all of them have different needs, different wants, different concerns with regard to the organization that they work. And so your messages would usually be very different from each subgroup. Now, for any organization concerned about getting through their employees, they must make sure that they offer them the following respect, honest feedback, a recognition, a voice, and encouragement. Of course, we all know what respect is. If we are not respectful to our employees, they will tend to be very unhappy. We also need to give honest feedback about how employees are working. The employees want to, be f they want to feel that you either appreciate what they are doing or you do not appreciate what they are doing so that they will be able to change along the line. So candid communication is very, very important for you to provide this honest feedback. Employees want to be recognized. So when they do well, of course, you know that you have to institute some measures to be able to make this recognition known among all employees. They want to be able to talk, to take part in programs and making known 
the activities of the organization. They need a voice. Employees also need to be encouraged. It's not only monetary encouragement, but there are other things which can also encourage workers to be able to do of their, or give of their best. Communication programs can provide that kind of employ, uh, uh, that kind of encouragement for the workers. So let's look at effective workplace communications. What can we use to be able to effectively communicate with uh, employees at the workplace? According to Milton, these are a willingness to express dissent, visibility and proximity of upper management, priority of internal to external communications, attention to clarity, a friendly tone, and a great sense of humor. What do we mean by willingness to express dissent? Employees want to be able to feed back to management their opinions and even dissent about issues which are happening. If we don't give them the opportunity to be able to express the sense, you are breeding what you call the grapevine. Employees want visibility and proximity of upper management. They want to see management very close. They don't want management to be too far away from them. They want to be able to communicate with even upper management. Employees also want internal communication to be very effective. Most ti at times, organizations think of just giving out or creating better external communications as opposed to internal communication. So you go to an organization, people don't know exactly what is happening within. It is only the external people who come to tell you, oh, this is going to happen in your organization. That is not very good for the internal publics. Employees will also want attention to clarity. Good companies write benefit programs with clarity so that the employees will be able to read and understand exactly what they, they would do to be able to benefit from activities or benefit from the projects or benefits from the human resource activities or human resource that they can actually benefit from. Employees also want you to speak, to with, speak with them in a friendly tone. They want usually a sense of humor to be created around issues. And generally, what internal communication really boils down to is credibility. And so it's a task for management to convince employees that it does not only desire to communicate with them, but it also wishes to do that truthfully, frankly, and in a very direct manner. So the key to credibility, what is it that employees really want? That means your internal publics. They want the managers to level with them. They want facts. And usually, this is what happens. The facts are hidden. They are not brought out till a rumor starts before the facts are told to employees. That is not what employees want, because they are internal publics. They want the truth, and they want to know how they are doing as an organization. So that is the key to credibility. So when em employees talk about credibility, they want managers to level with them. They want the facts. They want the truth. And they want to know how the organization is doing. Under credibility, trust in organization is very, very important. To trust in organization means you communicate early with the um, employees, demonstrate that you even share good news as well as bad news. You ask of their opinion and their ideas. And then management for you, you need that feedback so that you'll be able to gauge exactly how the employees are doing and how you are doing as an organization. So management can build trust in the employee by following this simple acronym. This acronym, which I call SHOC, says that management has to be strategic, it has to be honest, 
it has to be open, it has to be consistent. So what are some of the communication strategies to enable management to effectively use the acronym SHOCK? So let's look at some of the communication strategies and tactics. So the five elements in any strategic program, you survey employees' attitude, you are consistent, you personalize communication because you do not have just one subgroup or just one group of, uh, of workers, there are several subgroups. So for whichever group you need to personalize the communication, you need to be candid and you need to be very innovative. Now, there are various techniques, as, as I mentioned, which can be used to reach all these subgroups of employees. So let's start with some internal communication. So you can have internal communication audits. This audit helps to determine the staff attitudes about the jobs, organization, and its mission. The audit is conducted by organizational personnel or consultants. Once this internal communication research is done, the PR officer has a clearer idea of the kinds of communication channels suitable for the organization. So the internal communication audit is very important. In some communication, because you have employees who are in different branches, you will need this communication audit to tell you which are the most effective communication channels to use, especially for employees who are in branches. So online communication email and the rest. These are also very good, especially for those in branches, branch offices. Because they are not close to you, you will not be able to see them physically and do the face-to-face -face, uh, conferences or messages. So email or online communications are very important, especially for those outside the head office or yes, those outside head office. Intranet is part of this online communication. So you set up an intranet and so that everybody in the organization will be able to log in to know exactly what is going on in the organization. An intranet is very important. You should note how the in intranet operates and take care of the culture of the organization. So when you set up an intranet, note a few things, such as the culture of the organization, set clear objectives, and treat it as a journalistic enterprise. If you do not lay your grand rules for how information should be communicated through the in intranet, you would find so many information which is not required to be on the internet being circulated. So set your grand rules for the internet, intranet. Then, of course, within the intranet, there are other things that you have to do. When you have to do your marketing, do your marketing. Um, um, you should show the senior management commitment to using the intranet to be able to support the interest and support the the interest of all other employees. We have another communication tool, which is the print publication. So if you do not use the online communication, you would use the print publication. And then with print publication, be also um, particular about what goes into the print publication. Make sure that there are no errors in your print publications because chances are somebody who is not an internal public would read your print publication, may chance on it, or somebody would even give your print publication to somebody who is not an employee, and then they would see all the different kinds of mistakes in the print publication. So be particular, pay particular attention to what goes in the print publication. You can also communicate a lot with your, public, uh, with your internal publics using different facilities available. 
these days we have so many desktop publishing and software available for you to be able to create very beautiful, very um, attractive designs in your print publications. Another print publication is your annual reports. Annual reports are a very good place to discuss issues informally and yet candidly. So use your annual report to be able to communicate with your employees. Pay attention to what should be included in the annual report. Um, you could even have two types of annual reports, one which will go out to the external publics and one solely to the employees. Bulletin boards, this can be electronic or manual. So depending on where your publics are, where your internal publics are, you need to repackage your information, make it lively and visual. Don't crowd bulletin boards because otherwise new messages would get lost on the boards. Mm -hmm. Suggestion boxes and town hall meetings. You can have suggestion boxes around for employees to put down suggestions about things going on or things which should go on but not going on. You can have town hall meetings to be able to have face-to-face -face and get the feedback you, you need. So these are all communication strategies you can use with your employees. You can have internal videos to be able to communicate parts of um, what has to be done in organization. Maybe within the organization, you have um, the research commons, for instance, what goes on in the research commons. You can have a video of the research commons and show it to people, either new employees or even to refresh people's memories about what goes on in the research commons. So internal videos are very useful and they help even in educating your other employees. Now, if you do not ensure that internal communication is very solid and then the, your employees have the trust of the organization and they do not feel the credibility of the organization. This is what happens, the grapevine. And as an organization and as a PR officer, you will have to deal with the grapevine. If you do not deal with the grapevine, it quickly destroys your organization. So the best defense against damaging the grapevine rumors is a strong and candid communication system. And as we have looked at, we've looked at several communication systems. So as a PR officer, you will need to encourage management to use a number of these communication systems to be able to avoid the grapevine. The grapevine or the rumors destroys any organization. And building back internal cred credibility after the grapevine or the rumors is very difficult. So in the first place, make sure it does not happen. Listen to your employees so that you do not fall into this category where the employees do not trust you, do not think, do not think that you are credible, and they would rely rather on rumors to be able to thrive in the organization. So let's look generally at um, the skills which are needed for employees to work in the organization. So as a PR officer also, make sure that these skills are available to your employees. So knowledge of the communication skills, um, technology skills, writing and speaking, interpersonal skills, understanding the organizational culture, and then how to format, edit, and work within deadlines. So these are the skills that employees need. If they don't have these skills, then doing a lot of communication would be a problem. So make sure as a peer officer, you have these skills to be able to work with the other employees. So in conclusion, in the 21st century, organizations have no choice. They have to build the rapport with and increase the morale among employees. If the rapport is not built, you lose trust, you lose credibility, and then the grapevine 
flourishes. But the best defense against grapevine is a strong and candid employee communication systems. So do not forget all the communication techniques and media that we have enumerated in this session because effective employee communication requires openness and which can be only done through the communication channels and it also requires honesty from senior management. For your activity, discuss in the chat rooms all the different communication strategies which have been listed in this particular session. I want to thank you for this session. Thank you for paying attention. And these are practical communication strategies. I expect that you'll be able to use them wherever you go, even in your own organizations. Thank you.